This is an update on the um, SI5351 VFO project, um, Arduino Nano Controlled. So, um, as you can see, I've put it in a little case. Just take that antenna sensor off there. And I bought um, I bought three little uh, connectors out on the back panel, which I haven't wired in yet. So initially, I built it with this uh, this push button here, but this was direct to a digital pin. It was using up a digital pin, and so I've decided to build this into a multi-band receiver, double double conversion receiver. So, um, so I need more. I need, I need my digital pins. So I tried this idea of uh, stringing together a resistive divider, um, and these are just um, momentary push button switches. So they're center off. Um, I choose these because I like them better than push buttons, and you can wire them to do the same thing. And that's hanging off a single analog pin, which gets read, and then the voltage gets converted to a to a button, a logical button press. So um, so that's, and I built it into a little aluminium, little aluminium shell, um, as you can see. So um, I'll give you a little tour. So the first thing to notice is that I, I tried out a little uh, S meter down the bottom left hand corner there. And uh, it's not connected to anything. What you're seeing is a, just an algorithm that I wrote to simulate band noise. Uh, if I can get a circuit that um, comes off, an S-meter circuit that just uh, swings between um, what 0 and 5 volts or thereabouts, um, and I can probably do some of the non-linear adjustment in code, um, but that was quite easy to do. Um, okay, so I'll show you some of the features. So the first one is, um, so this is, the, this is the step, so when I tune it, now I'm tuning in kilohertz, the arrow moves along. Now tens of kilohertz. And if I wrap it around, I'm tuning in uh, tens of hertz. And now hundreds of hertz. I put a little feature in here that when you move off 10 hertz or 100 hertz, the residual frequency um, zeros to the next whole kilohertz. Because one thing I really don't like about these VFOs when you change your step, if you leave a odd sort of a figure in the sub one kilohertz part of the register, um, then you've got to go back there, cycle through, go back, sort of get on the right digit and you know zero it and then get up to the next digit and zero it. So I don't like that. So I decided that when you move up onto a kilohertz, um, it should just um, Clear the residual. So, uh, this is the VFO, VFO. So there are three VFOs, A, B, and C. Each one of them maintains its own frequency. The frequencies aren't stored anywhere, so they reset to default values when you power up and down. This is a mode switch over there on the right, so AM sideband CW, and the sideband is selected depending on whether you're or not you're above or below. 10 megahertz, um, and that'll have to drive a couple of control lines out to, to relays in a receiver. And then this switch at the end, which is not a spring back switch at the moment because I ran out, and this is a mute, so RX goes to TX, then comes back to RX. And then the ba band change, so I've loaded it up with uh, a bunch of bands. So there's uh, 60, there's 40, um, Again, three VFOs on each of the bands, uh, 10, 30 meters, 20 meters, and then the switch can be pushed up to cycle back down. And for a bit of fun, I've put 1.8 uh, broadcast band, which of course has its three VFOs set to my favorite AM stations and default mo defaults the mode to AM. And I put, um, 600 meters in there as well. Not that I think the receiver might ever work on 600 meters, but anyway, just a bit of fun. It doesn't cost you anything in software. So if I go on to 
80 meters. Get an oscillator around about here. One of the VFOs has got an oscillator here, so just find the VFO. So when I toggle the VFOs, it goes off somewhere else in the band, comes back, and of course, um, the usual thing with tuning. The, um, the oscillator is just having a standard fixed offset set to it whenever I do band changes at the moment, so it'll be shooting off into somewhere nonsensical. So I'll have to code away around that, but changing the frequency on the SI5351 clocks is just so easy. Um, it's probably not going to be too hard to do. The other thing I haven't done is that for a double conversion super hit, you need a, um, a heterodyne oscillator to do the initial drive the initial mixer to convert it down into the tunable IF. And um, so I haven't set um, clock B of the three clocks up yet. And apparently there are some restrictions. I read somewhere yesterday that there are some restrictions on what you can do with some of the clocks. So we'll just have to work, work that one out. That's it for now. Cheers.